Well, I need a Mila's Reef shirt, actually. <laughs> you probably do. Yeah. Well, will you get one, and then I'll get one, and then we can trade. Yeah, that would be totally it. We'll wear each other's shirts and confuse the channels. Perfect. I like it. Let's do it. It'll, right. it'll be a shirt trading day. What is going? We all good to go now. We can actually talk to the world. We can. We're live. What is oh. going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream. Um, today we got Mr. Mark from Mila's Reef on. How are you doing today, buddy? You're just doing that good. He just <laughs> pretends to be muted again. What a guy. <laughs> no, the mic works fine. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yep sorry for the slight delay there's a couple audio issues we were just quickly getting sorted out so we weren't just miming the whole time as entertaining as that would be you know um so today's topic uh actually on one of the previous streams whereas let me pull up the question they were asking so when you say you don't need a skimmer so in a previous one we were talking about skimmers versus skimmerless came up as a side topic so they're saying when you, when you say you don't need a skimmer what is that based off of i think it'd be a good topic I wonder because I run a refugium also, I also wonder, wonder how much of the good stuff the skimmer is pulling out, which is a very good point because I often wonder if we are possibly over skimming our system or mm -hmm. our water is too clean. Um, could you starve corals by skimming? Another great point. Uh, important subject because I like to do some tests to determine when run one or not for nitrates, phosphates. Now, in the LG turf scrubber world, I see lots of people that will just run a turf scrubber and not run a skimmer, right? Mm -hmm. And I've also seen tanks with a giant refugium instead of a skimmer. So there's a few different pros and cons of each one of these methods. And yeah, should be a good topic today, I think. Yeah. Quick shout outs. We got Richard, Derek, Philip, Irie, Teresa, Adam, McKay, Mac, Mackay's daddy, Mac's daddy, <laughs> Gabe's Reef, Raj, Kevin. What is going on, guys? Hopefully everyone is having a wonderful Wednesday. Two of my favorite people hosting. Thank you. Oh, wow. I know. So I'll tell you, this time I chose to not see your channel while we're on the stream because it's 20 mm. seconds behind. It's very confusing it is. to my brain. So I'm just talking to you today, Devin, and I Perfect. can't see the conversation. Or I, I see you and your magic green screen. That no one Ex knows excellent, <laughs> excellent. That, that's the hidden magic. Um, so what I just what I do on the side, I just pop out the chat so there's no own window, and then I just hide YouTube so I don't see it, just so I see the chat. If I can bring that up, then hang on. I'm yep. going to YouTube. It's, it's going to mute the audio so we don't get the 20 second delay. All right. All right. So Aaron was saying an LG turf scrubber, and I like having a skimmer for O2. Um, I definitely do agree with you on that one. Aside from removing organics out of the water, adding more oxygenation to the water is probably one of the biggest benefits of having a skimmer. Um, do do do. What are your thoughts on Ecotech's simpler connectivity? We will get to that one in a future stream. <laughs> Possibly after maybe next week. We'll we'll see. I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can get Ecotech on for that one. That's still in beta and not out in the world yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so what if you skim N refuge? Good or bad or needed? So I currently have a refugium as well as a skimmer on my large reef, and I believe Mark has the same setup. You have a nice big giant Nios and a skimmer, or sorry, and a refugium. Yeah. Yep. So you're doing both. Um, on my nano tank, I don't run a skimmer or a refugium, so you don't necessarily need them. So there's multiple ways to do it. Now, one thing I've noticed from not having a skimmer on my nano is the pH tends to be lower um, because you're not getting the extra oxygenation in the water, which isn't driving out as much CO2. So that's one thing to kind of, one downside of doing it. But I get asked all the time, do I need one? Should I have one? Now, there's certain tanks I've seen that are skimmerless, like Jimmy's tank. It's massive SPS reef, and he doesn't have a skimmer on his. It's just one big refugium, right? That's he has because he's lazy, and he won't hook up his skimmer. Exactly. He this beautiful, gorgeous thing. It's an MRC skimmer, mm -hmm. and just hasn't had it plumbed into the tank for a year. <laughs> and his tank, is it 500 or 800 gallons? It's big. I feel like it's 500 plus like a 600 gallon refugium. It's something, I mean, a uh, sump refugium. Mm -hmm. So he has something, you know, 900, 1100 gallons of total water. And he's changing a whole bunch of water every week. Mm -hmm. he's dosing like crazy too, by hand, you know, with a, a single dosing pump. He's putting in a gallon solution of every solution every day to keep yep. up with demands, which is insane. It's ridiculous but how much. He has the gear. He hasn't hooked any of it up. Yep. So it just goes to show. You obviously do not need a skimmer. He has a big refugium, and he's supporting, you know, 800 gallons wall-to-wall -wall corals. So right. 
it's uh it's interesting right so i think yeah. it's a good one um so that right there goes to show no you don't need a skimmer now these days it most of the tanks everyone wants quiet super quiet tanks you know we don't have big waterfalls and rushing and gushing all over the place like we used to in old school tanks so yeah. those waterfalls are really good for oxidation so because we don't have those i find a lot of people have lower ph now so skimmer hands down raising ph is one of the biggest benefits mm -hmm. now in terms of nutrient removal they also do a pretty good job of that um just look at the cover photo like how much nasty gunk that it pulls out it's you, you question what's all in i mean it's all the proteins and food that breaks down and fish poop and everything else that ends up in the skimmer cup yeah. so that removing that i mean kind of gives that little happy fuzzy feeling as you're like oh look at all the gunk i pulled out but at the same time if you're you don't notice if you don't have a skimmer to an extent like your refugium can take up a lot of those nutrients so would you okay here's the question would you ever do one or the other would you go just to skimmer and no refugium or just refugium and no skimmer i kind of have a rule to do both yeah <laughs> my new something i'm building right now is going to enlarge the refugium a little bit larger hmm. and i'm shrinking the skimmer zone because i don't have as big a skimmer as in the old days mm -hmm. i had a huge euro reef skimmer that took up something like 22 by 22 inches you know big footprint mm -hmm. and my nios is maybe 13, 14 by 17. That's so it, it's a little smaller. And so I can actually shrink the zone. So I'm, I'm in the process of building a new sump for my system right now. Nice. How's it coming? Uh, well, you know, starting to glue. That's that's the process. That's a, that's a good so start. I can't do it right now because I'm on, on a live stream. <laughs> I know, right? We're letting the glue and stuff set and dry. Yeah. Letting exactly. it percolate in your mind. That'll be good. But if I had a choice between would I do one or the other, if that was the way it had to be, I would mm -hmm. always do skimmer. Skimmer okay. over? Okay. Absolutely. And what is your justification for that? Because a skimmer is sort of like the the net under the type rope artist. Yeah. And if for some reason anything were to go wrong, the net saves his life. Mm -hmm. And a skimmer will catch everything. It that's the beauty yeah. of it, that if something really goes to hell there's a good chance that the skimmer will extract it quickly or try to yep. extract it. I mean, there's certain scenarios where it can't overcome it. Like if someone mm -hmm. sabotages your tank, yep. throws in pennies, skimmer can't help. If yep. someone throws in dish soap or, or pours a beer in there, skimmer mm -hmm. might overflow and make a big mess in the sump and really isn't pulling anything out like mm -hmm. you'd hope. Yeah. Nope, that's fair. And that's a for good the point. normal things, you know, the typical situation, I feel like it is so much better to have one than to not have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, yeah, I would agree. Uh, so in a larger reef, 100%, I am I still don't really think you necessarily need them on a small reef tank. Like I know at least on my Red Sea Nano, I pulled the skimmer out just because it was too loud and it didn't feel like it was overly useful. Yeah. Um, like it still skims, but it's just too much noise and ruckus for the, the mediocre light skimmy that you got out of it. So... On small tanks, I think I'm a big proponent of just do your water change on it and don't worry about it. It'll solve all issues, which, and I find a lot of, I don't know, I tell a lot of people to do that, and it just seems like that would catch all with the water change on it. Yeah. Um, now, the other kind of question that was coming up, too, is do you think you can over-skim a tank? Can your skimmer pull out too much out of your water? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Uh, yeah, if the skimmer is too big for the tank. It, it can do two things. It can either do a great job and pull everything out to strip the water, or it can just not work right because it keeps collapsing because there's nothing in there to work with. <laughs> you know, it has no proteins. Yep. So it just kind of sits there idling, and you're like, well, I've got this amazing skimmer made for a 10,000-gallon tank, and it won't work on my 100. And it's like, well, I wonder why. It's <laughs> <laughs> there's just nothing there. So you, mm -hmm. do want, you do want to match them up. And I do feel that these days skimmers are actually being advertised I believe they're being advertised close to what they're really rated for. In the old days, it was just like pure guesswork. Like, this will work from this to this. And you just kind of hoped. But I think yeah. they actually know now. I think there's no more guessing. Well, the hard thing is, too, they're like, oh, you can have this giant fish only tank or this part of a mixed reef. Like the ranges are so broad yeah. on the skimmer. So yeah. would you rather undersize or oversize the skimmer? Always over. Always over? I want to catch all the stuff. You Wait. gotta realize I'm a guy that doesn't do water changes. So, I know. I mean, you know, there's a really good reason why I have a skimmer. But you also just said if the skimmer is too big, it's just like useless and doesn't do anything. But yeah, if it was massive, like if I went to get an MRC thing that's, you know, eight feet to the ceiling, 
mm-hmm. probably wouldn't do very good on my tank because it's only 400 against 450 gallons. All right, that's an extreme example, but okay, fair. <laughs> but you no, know, if if I had a skimmer rater for 500 and my tank was 400, I'd be happy. Mm-hmm. I I mean, matter of fact, the one I have, the Nios 300, is uh, rated for up to a thousand, which I think is really Thanks. ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I believe that. It's working fine on my tank, but mm-hmm. I don't know how it would do in 1,000 gallons. I'd almost need to see that in action to believe it. I, all right. I'm looking up the specs from mine now because it got me curious. But it, it, the range on it was crazy, if I can mm-hmm. find it. Uh, oh, for your Nios? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is a big range. It's yeah. like 265 Six, to... 60 to 250. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. You got that one. I thought you were the next size up. You, no. I thought you had the 220. Mm, into the 160. The 160, yeah. Yeah, oh. it's kind of a weird broad. It is a broad range there. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right. But I think that would be too small for like my old 280. Yeah, that's fair. I definitely want the Quantum 220 yep. to keep up my 220 to keep up my 280. Mm-hmm. So what I might do, I'm still debating. I don't, I don't think I need the 220, but if I do set the frag tank, I may get it and swap them. Yeah. We'll see. Because you'll have more water volume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or just have one on each tank if they're separated. Yeah. Okay, so now... Another kind of good kind of side one on this. Okay, so first of all, can your skimmer strip your water too clean? What do you think? I don't know. Don't know? I mean, it will never strip mine too clean. Maybe because I'm a heavy feeder. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm constantly putting food in my tank, and, you know, like, I just don't care. <laughs> yeah. And I rely on my skimmer to take care of the situation. Yep. No, that's fair. But now, if you had to go a few days without a skimmer, like, because you're treating your tank with ChemiClean, for example, mm-hmm. you might be thinking, oh, no. What's happening and what do you have to do you have to do a huge water change yep. because there's so much now the skimmer can't even keep up mm-hmm. no that's fair yeah. um it, yeah and it takes a few until your skimmer goes back to normal right it just overflows goes crazy yeah so okay now another another good one that i get asked or question sometimes if you're adding because skimmers don't really discriminate right anything mm-hmm. that's going to bond to those the foam the bubbles is going to make into the cup yeah so as you're feeding you know obviously you want to export those nutrients after a little while um but if you're dosing stuff to your tank i mean certain trace elements or other things could also theoretically be skimmed out possibly. so yeah so possibly like medications like a lot of stuff that you dose advises to take it out um yeah. like amino acids actually someone's talked about amino acids um so I, that could even very well be skimmed out quickly after you dose it so kind of where you're dosing stuff like downstream a skimmer is probably a good idea for a lot of this type of stuff or potentially turning it off for a little while right that's the trick because people dose all day long so many times mm-hmm. in the old days you dosed once a day because you poured it in by hand like you woke up and poured it in and so you could actually physically have your skimmer off for 10 15 minutes yep you know now you got the apex so you could possibly code it and make it match everything like when this is dosing this is not skimming but that'd be a lot of voodoo to get that to work out exactly right i am um... you're feeding foods there's two things that can happen with the skimmer. Either the skimmer will shut itself down, the water mm-hmm. just collapse within it and just kind of idles mm-hmm. because there's all that oily food from like PE mysis. And then, you know, it starts building up again. Or yep. it could do like you poured phytoplankton in your tank and your skimmer just sucks it right back out and you have a cup full of phytoplankton. Yep. So no. you, there are certain foods you may decide I need to shut off my skimmer or set it on a countdown timer mm-hmm. or set a timer on my, my telephone to remind me to turn it back on again. Yeah. So if you have a controller, you can automate that. If you don't, mm-hmm. you'll probably forget about it. So yeah. timer's a very good idea. It's a good call. It's old school timer. I like it. I set the timer <laughs> on my iPhone all the time. I must set it 15 times a day for different things. Yeah. Just because, you know, I started something and I want to set a timer so I don't forget because I'm doing eight things at once. And then I'm like, didn't I? Like, what's that one for? I'm like, oh, yeah. And I go handle it really quick. Mm-hmm. So. Nice. I was just laughing in the comments. Someone goes, is Devin drinking live bacteria? Technically, I am, yes. <laughs> someone gave me this kombucha stuff that I'm trying. Oh, no, I want it. I want to drink. Oh, can I drink moonshine on your show? Yeah. <laughs> Let me go get it. <laughs> <laughs> you actually are. <laughs> uh, um, ATS in a quarantine tank, and it's very minimal at removing copper. So I have heard that turf scrubbers can remove copper. I've never tried it. Ooh, you got the apple pie one, don't you? I got this from a... That's apple pie. This is probably the apple pie that I got from Aquatella. From Seth, I believe his name is. Yep. So, and it's been sitting in my fridge ever since. So it's probably had more time to ferment. I don't know. (laughs) Do they do anything in the fridge? 
that that stuff is delicious. It literally tastes like apple pie. I'm gonna find out here in a second. Mm. Drinking out of a jar. Um, so Adam Moore is asking, have you guys tried Reef Bright and Hands? I believe you have, haven't you? It's good, isn't it? Good. I told you. Reef Bright, you mean Live Rock and Hands? Um, they said Reef or, Bright and Hands. I think it's the same thing. Or Reef and Hands, because there's two different kinds. The mm. jars look identical. Mm. One says Reef Enhanced by Reef Bright, and one's called Live Rock Enhanced by Reef Bright. Yeah. So I can tell you about both. I've used both. Have you used both? No. Have you used either? No. You That's should why I see. Reef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we I got the fence. Your yeah. old roof needs some cleaning. It's hideous over there. I need you to clean it. Yeah. All right. What, what, fence. To fill, fill us in. You sell it. Do you sell it? I have a bacteria. Yeah, I do. And okay. uh, matter of fact, I just ordered another 24 jars because I just keep moving that stuff off the shelf. It's amazing. So it obviously it's really works well. It's a magical well. product for 2019. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. So it's a bacteria that's used to consume the waste and decay in your tank. Mm -hmm. And when you put it in your reef, a few times you know mm -hmm. it, it's not like you just put it in boom magic but if you use it a few times like four times in two weeks and then look at your tank like another week later you're gonna see a vast difference between the dingy rock you had and now what looks like really clean rock and all the coralline just pops of color kind of amazing hmm, nice. and your camera will pull out a lot of stuff uh it's it's fun to use i'm actually going to do a video showing the exact use of it because a lot of people everyone has a different way of using it mm -hmm. I and mean, there's instructions included but i'm doing exactly what i was told by reef bright just put it in your tank yep. those are his words and like literally unscrew the lid and put it in your tank just mm -hmm. put it in and i was going to get a cup because no just put it in the tank I was like, okay, what about my skimmer? He goes, leave it on. I said, what about the return pump? Leave it on. I'm like, okay. Really? I put it in the tank, and it was so easy. I literally unscrew the cap. I'm, For example, a smaller tank, like a 60-gallon, 50-gallon. Yep. You put two of the little scoops that came with a container on the surface of the water, and it just goes whoosh, it heads for the overflow. Yep. And you can see like these little orbs or pills blowing all over the tank, and the fish are eating it. And it's bombarding your corals, and it's hitting the rocks, and it's bouncing mm. around just like crazy. This ricochets. is this is the enhanced or the food? That's the enhanced. Okay. Live rock enhanced. All right. So what about the food? Okay, the other one called Reef Enhance, it has some foods in it, and it has some bacteria in it. And the one thing I can tell you, I've only used that one twice, mm -hmm. is that anything that's in your tank will be supercharged. So, for example, if you have some copepods, and you put in Reef Enhance, you'll have lots of copepods. Mm -hmm. If you have Aptasia, you'll have lots of Aptasia. <laughs> because it literally will make anything grow that's in your tank. So if you have pests and you have a happy reef, you're going to see more of everything because it, that's how it works. So that is just something to kind of keep in mind. Like maybe handle the, pe the pest before you throw that in there so you don't end up with like a million Aptasia. <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of weird things, you know. I, I do see people post once in a while about trying to breed those little Aptasia eating nudibranchs. I mean, yeah. hey, that could be the prime food for those guys in the tank. Keep them going. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, so what what's the Benny Reef, that food that's supposed to clean your glass and that food's ridiculous that's another that it's like live rock enhance and benary are my two big things i've been pushing like crazy so how, it have knocked my socks off so how how's the food working for you the food is really really easy to use mm -hmm. i'm only using this broadcast feeding yep. i use it twice a week um mm -hmm. i've used it at night i've used it in the daytime i talked with Dwayne and he suggested all you know he uses it at night as well i mentioned Dwayne all the time because he has a stunning sps reef and most reef keepers are very cautious. Mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to take a chance. And Dwayne is the one that literally used the food wrong from the beginning. He put it in his tank every single day. Yep. And by doing that, you would think after a month he'd have cyano and dinoflagellates and algae. Nothing. And he went, he burned through the big, huge jar that's rated mm -hmm. for something like 6,500 gallons. He used it in one month flat. Really? And had nothing bad happen, no nitrates, no phosphates. And I'm like, well, if you can do that in your tank, and that's mm -hmm. a really picky, finicky SPS reef. I said, I'm going to put it in my mixed reef, and I actually was more serious about it. And it's super easy to use. It feeds all those polyps. If you have Duncans, if you have Dendrophilia, if you have Candy Cane, um, Hammers, you know, all the, the normal LPS-type corals that you normally have to target feed specifically, mm -hmm. you can just put this food in the entire reef. And it's a quarter teaspoon per 25 gallons, so the measurement's really easy. 
All right. You just mix it up in a cup of water, and five minutes later, you pour it in your tank and just let it dissipate. All right. I, I need to use this more often. I've been experimenting with it, but I, but I haven't fed it like consistently enough. Well, you mentioned, and it went over everyone's head really quick, it does keep the glass clean longer. And that's, that is the thing that really shocked me when I started using it, because I was like, wow, my glass. That's why I wanted to try it. Green. It's so weird. How about that? So I contacted said, what is going on with my glass? And he said, yeah, that's a side effect. <laughs> I was like, so what's left to complain about? I don't get nutrient issues. My corals grow and my glass stays mm -hmm. clean longer. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> that sounds rough. Okay, quick shout out. Aaron Offshore, batter up guys, bring it on. Oh, and thanks for the live chat, Devin. 501 Super Chat, thank you, Aaron. And Derek, Aaron, you're not winning today, 502. Thank you very much, guys. Always appreciate it. Okay, so... Casey Reeves noticed that I'm wearing his shirt today. Woo! Ho, ho, ho. Go nuts. Styling. <laughs> so when you get your own shirt, I'll trade you one. <laughs> I'm too humble to have a shirt that broadcasts my name across the front. That's just not my, right. okay, mine are still subtle. That's my logo. Like ah, I have a couple of big ones, but most of them I can't even see them backwards camera. Um, but most of them are super subtle. I just it like doing like a fish with a big burning ball of sun. Yeah, it's a uh, angler fish. I know. I'm just... <laughs> it's a I sun like fish. It. There's a moon fish. Sun fish could work. <laughs> All right, there's a couple of comments earlier. One of them was asking something about filter socks and if we think it decreases the efficiency of a skimmer. Um, it can... Wait, can you do that again? I didn't hear it. Let me read the actual comment. Um, once I find it... It scrolled past a minute ago. Oh, there we go. Uh, love Devin and Mila's Reef. Thank you, thank you. Mira's Reef. Um, should you... Should you use filter socks? What are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts? And does running a sock reduce skimmer efficiency? Oh. You want reduce it? I wouldn't say it reduces it. Um, what it can do is trap, like it will trap the bigger particles before they actually break down. Yeah. So if you change your socks, it's helping out your skimmer in a way because you're removing them before those organics break down. If you're a slacker and you don't change your socks very often, then it's going to just break down in the sock and there's no real benefit other than it potentially just clarifying your water from moving those particles. Quick shout out to Chris's fish room. Boom, boom, boom. Keep up the work, Dev. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Very awesome. Thank you. Um, so socks work well as long as you change them. If you don't change them, it's basically irrelevant. They don't really make a big difference. Um, in theory, they could be slightly harmful because stuff could... It can prevent some of the bacteria that normally get that food or your fish from recycling through your system, breaking it down. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of the filter rollers lately because it physically removes it from the water column as it gets clogged. So you're removing that organics out of the water. Yeah. So. What do you and the micron rating matters and the frequency of replacing the thoughts matters. Yep. Yes, yes, it does. So if you're going to use socks, change them every, you know, four or five days, ideally. I would agree. Yeah, three to four days. Well, the thing is, the minute the first bit of crap goes in that sock, it's sitting there until the day you pull the sock out. Yeah. So while well, you might say, oh, my God, look, that it looks so dirty now. It's in three days. It's 72 hours of waste in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's cumulative. I mean, there's waste from day one still in the sock, still in your water. Yep. So pulling it out every three days is best. And you should never be pulling out a sock because it's overflowing. <laughs> You should be removing it because it's time. That's what I used to do. Yeah, when it gets over, yeah. 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 There and, was a fish store by my house that he would throw the socks away. He didn't have time to clean them. So mm -hmm. he put one in the tank, it would overflow a month later. He'd just throw it away and stick a new one in. I was like, you don't even wash these? I'm like, maybe I should. But then I don't want to wash them. So I was like, whatever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, hey. Do you have YouTube on? I can hear myself in the background all of a sudden. Okay, it went away. All right, Aaron's offshore, 503. We'll catch up. Derek's being cheap. <laughs> Good solid chats tonight. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Um, okay, so with the roller mats, um, everyone's asking, do they smell? That was my biggest concern before getting one. I'm like, is there going to be some nasty roll of stuff breaking down outside of the tank? Um, there is next to nothing for a smell from it. So that is one thing that made me really happy because I asked everyone I knew, go smell it. Let me know if the difference. That was by <laughs> far my biggest worry. Um, so that is, it doesn't. Uh, my wife, she complains about any little smell. So overall, I think they're 
Awesome solution. Holy smoke, Super Chat, crazy to name. Derek504. <laughs> Love you, Devin. Thank you, Aaron, second place. Oh, it's like a Super Chat battle. That is I'm awesome. going to send it to you, Devin. I don't know if you want to use it or not. I'm saying to you as a message on Messenger. Okay. <clears throat> Um, this is my new layout of my uh, new sum, <clears throat> and I wanted to talk to you about one part of it. Perfect. Let me quickly screenshot it and drag it over. Give me two secs. There's the little snipping tool. All so right. like, I've also got the Clarity, and I haven't installed it yet because I want to install it on the new sum rather than jamming it in somewhere on the old sum. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things I want to do with a new one, I want to make like an acrylic drop-in unit that the Clarisee will fit into. And then uh. I don't want to use the Clarisee for some reason. Let's say I'm just tired of buying new rolls of fleece and I'd rather just throw in the occasional sock. Mm -hmm. I want to lift that thing out and put in my sock assembly. Mm. Hold it with that a, instead. That's a not so bad that, idea. There's two rectangles there where it shows the seven inch sock and then underneath it shows the Clarisee tray. But I have to finish inventing that part because uh, I'm really having a hard time wrapping my brain about how to make it work. The um, the Clarity itself is a certain size, but they want you to pump the water in mm -hmm. and not get water from the drain into it, you know, directly. And yep. I'm not really sure. I haven't come up with a good workaround other well, than water dumps into it somehow. Well, just it mounts on the edge. Yeah. Like I'll send you. Do you have one? Yeah. Okay. Because mine's mounted on the edge of the glass, and then the pipe just goes straight into it. I mean, you could just take out that, take out the clarity and leave the pipe there and use that for a sock or just let it flow into the sump. Well, that's why I'm trying to figure out a way to make the water like pour into where the clarity is sitting. Mm -hmm. um, now, instead of pumping it into the pipe, I would just pipe it directly and then just pop it off. Because that was our pump. Or, or, or and I was just kind of wanting to use the water, the raw water coming from the display mm. straight into the clarity. You could probably make like a little waterfall channel that fell inside of it. I bet that would work. I don't know if it'd be silent though. Nick, aquarium, late to the party. 99 super chat. You guys are freaking amazing tonight. Oh, okay, late it's to the party. Great. I know. This is like the most I've ever had in my life. Nick, thank you very much. <laughs> Ed, DC Reefer, great channel. <laughs> Thanks, Hub. <laughs> you, realize you have to split this with me 50 50 right <laughs> yeah are you coming to reef of palooza <laughs> no. no no i've never been to the new york reef of palooza me neither um drama d says use a manifold why you don't you I don't want to use the manifold is because it's the other end of the sump it's like the water that's clean that's leaving the sump i'd be pumping that back into the clarity because of where well it's then it's already clean it's not an issue um then i don't need the clarity <laughs> <laughs> well, it would no, it'll be clean from it. Or why don't you just use um a union? Then you could just screw it and swap over your little pipe That's adapter. What I was wondering if I could do something interesting with a union where I could like reach in and get the two guys to match up. Yep, sure could. Or union. I ordered a whole bunch of plumbing parts for my new project. They yep. get here next week. Hundred hundred percent will work. Um, I would just use a union and you just swap out your pipe for whatever you need in there. Make your life easy. Or just I use flex hose and that. plug it in. Yeah um okay so anyone use a bio brick with no pox i'm having amazing results there is lots of variables so would like others experience um bio brick i've used marine pier i've never used no pox i did diy vodka dosing back in the day uh, marine pier is basically the same thing just ceramic media and yeah i i did at the time i was trying to lower my nitrates now i can't even keep nitrates up so i'm just like dumping in food i kind of attribute that huh you could feed your tank. Look I, how much you're eating during this podcast. You are constantly eating, and your fish are starving to death. Blueberries. I dump food into my tank. You have no idea. It is like literally shovel it in. I feed. The, the auto feeder comes on two or three times a day. They get nori in the morning. Um, I feed frozen at night. Probably every other day, every couple days, I use like either Reefroids or Bene Reef or whatever that other clean your glass stuff is. Yeah. I put a lot of food in there. Well, I've seen your auto feeder. It's a woman. You just call her on the phone and say, "Hey, I need you to auto feed my tank." Right? Hey, works well. <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny video. Oh, that was uh, that was a good one. The yep, yeah. <laughs> love it. Um, okay, so Derek saying yes, I have a union on my Clara C. Hard plum works perfect. That's what I would just do, or just use a flex hose. Like if you go to the shows and they're display, they always have just a big flex hose going to it. You could take it off and move it, or. Yeah. But I also, um, Jay's tank, he has 
His clerisy just chilling in a sump, running off his own pump. So, I mean, either way, as long as water flows through, yeah, it's going to clear. A, it, you could give it its own pump. Yeah. Yeah. See, my plan with the plumbing in that get diagram I sent you was that the emergency drains are what would be dumped into the clerisy if I wanted to go that route for a day or a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would stop using the main drain. I'd stop using... I'd close off most of the flow, so it'd all have to go through the emergency drains. Mm -hmm. I have two ginormous inch and a half inch emergency drains, so they could easily keep up. I could do a crazy overnight cleaning, for example, and I could do phosphate RX with a with a ten micron sock. Yeah, and it would just pull everything out overnight. And the next morning, I crystal clear water, remove the sock, go back to my normal drain, which is dead silent, and it's amazing. Is phosphate RX lanthium chloride? Yes. Does it work well? <laughs> the best. Mm. I've been using it for over ten years. Really? I've never used it. Okay. Good to know. Um, I used to use GFO. Never. No? Why? I tried it back in 2004. Mm -hmm. And over a nine-month period, I think I tried six different brands of GFO with no luck at all. Really? And it just wouldn't come down. And my, not, my phosphates were 3.0. They were really up. I inherited this 280-gallon reef with a bunch of tangs. And I was feeding them two, three sheets of nori a day because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I got to feed tangs. I don't, I've never had tangs. So I was working from the seat of my pants. Yeah. And my phosphate shot up. I mean, it was so high. And I talked to the Randy Holmes Farley, who was our resident chemistry wizard back in the day. And he said, once you hit 3.0, it's actually in your rock and in your sand bed. So even as you extract it, it's going to keep leaching out because there's so much in the system. I've heard that. So that's actually true. Yeah, so I ended up coming across an, a, a product at the fish store called Fossil Buster Pro. Mm -hmm. And so it was like this bottle, like a 250 milliliter bottle. And I, it said, you know, pour it in your tank. So I think I bought two bottles because I needed that much for my tank. It was like a bottle and a half. Mm -hmm. And I poured it into the sump, and the next day my phosphates were zero. It's like, oh, I'd found the promised land. It was like the ultimate product. And so I was using Fossil Buster Pro, and I was buying it by the case. Mm -hmm. And I put in a bottle and a half every time I used it. Hmm. And then uh, it absolutely worked where GFO did nothing for me. And I tried GFO in different reactors. I had a Tunzi pump that would hold on to my tank magnetically on the mm -hmm. side of the front of the glass. And there was a cage meant for GFO to be put on the bottom of the Tunzi. So you'd actually see it. Hmm. And that, again, nothing was putting a dent in it. And really? then Phosphate RX came out. It was actually called Phosphate Control. And that product came out as a little eyedropper bottle. You can just count drops instead of pouring in a bottle and a half of what's mostly water into your reef. Mm -hmm. And as you know, it's a recipe, but it's always going to be this chemical plus X amount of water. And we're paying for a bottle of water, basically. <laughs> so I wanted Phosphate RX because I knew it was the condensed actual chemical. Mm -hmm. And I started using that, and it works beautifully. I used it maybe four times a year, five times a year, basically every 10 weeks. And it was a, you just do it. You know, it takes 30 seconds every 10 weeks. Yep. So that's why I've been using it forever and never went back to GFO. I guess that's pretty easy. Now, mine is has been super low, and I kind of partly attribute it to the filter roller, like the scammer and the mm -hmm. review gem. I mean, it's a mix of all the three. Now, Derek was just mentioning that he has the Clara C or Clearwater C. So that's the scrubber. Sure. Yeah, Trish scrubber and a large skimmer. Um, big bio load cannot get phosphates down so the turf scrubber is supposed to really knock on nitrates i don't think it helps with phosphates so he's gonna have to use something for phosphates yeah. whether your gfo or my phosphate rx uh, there's another product on the market that's called uh lanthanum no phosban l mm -hmm. from two little fishies and it's a big bottle and it's very concentrated and you have to dilute it like significantly. I think if you were making a, a cup of solution from the concentrate, I believe it's one, one part phosphan L, two parts water. So like 20 milliliters and then 40 milliliters of water on top to make a total of 60. Yep. And that works just like phosphate RX in the same principle, except You've got to do some math. You've got to mix it up yourself, and you have to be really careful with it, where I've never had to be careful with phosphate RX. I just <laughs> squish it in the tank, do, 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 and it was done. I was like, man. Now, is that, does it, do you, is that the one where you have to do it in a filter sock, or can you just do it anywhere? 
Okay, so that's the funny thing. And I don't, I mean, a filter sock always helps. Mm -hmm. So, FOS, I mean, yeah, Phosphate RX came out, or actually, FOS, like I said, it was, used to be called Phosphate Control. Mm -hmm. And it came out, and that's all we had. You just put that in, and your skimmer did the job. You didn't have a sock. And then there was a lawsuit by the FDA or something saying you've broken the law using the word control, and you have to, you cannot use control in the name. And there was a there was a fee. It was like eighty thousand dollars fine because they used that word in the title. So they had to rebrand the entire product. Oh wow! They rebranded every every bottle had to be relabeled. Every box had to be reprinted. It couldn't say control on it. Had mm -hmm. to, so that's why it became phosphate RX. Mm -hmm. And that's why all the products say RX on the end. Yeah. And uh, there's certain words you're just not allowed to use in California. Hmm. And if somebody told me there's an eighty thousand dollars fine, I would move out of California so quick. It's like forget it. I'll do it in Utah. Next state over, put your yeah. name back on it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, so anyway, uh, RX came out, and then I'd say about one, a year and a half, two years ago, um, the new owner of Blue Life USA, the one that took over the company, he told me, Mark, we got this new sock that you really have to use with Phosphate RX. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said, Where have you been the last nine years of my life when I didn't? And he said, Well, it's so much better. And what it is is that if you put in the 10 micron sock, which is not a standard sock, most socks are 100 or 200. Mm -hmm. You can use a 10 micron sock, it will catch all that stuff immediately mm -hmm. that your water never gets cloudy. This and is great for a tank that's on a public display mm -hmm. where they want to look pretty all day and you can't have a big white cloud and tell your customers, oh, well, come back tomorrow to look better. You know, it's yeah. possible. Nope. So anyway, the sock will help, help catch that stuff and it avoids it getting trapped in your fish's gills. Mm -hmm. that's, I've heard that can be an issue for some wrasses if there's too much in the water. It can be bad for their gills. Um, that's why I heard the sock I thing. I've so. been through it a million times. Well, okay, let's. How many times has it been? Let's say five times a year, ten years. That's fifty times. And in fifty times, I still have my fish. You know, I've over the years, I've lost a couple of fish out of all of them, and I never saw it happening like the day after I put phosphate rex in. Fair enough. I've never used it. I got nothing. Um, <laughs> no is asking. But anyway, yeah, if he yeah. wants to try that product out, I'd recommend it. It is on my website. Of course, it's everywhere else, like Amazon and all that too. Yep. And uh, it works really, really well. That's why I recommend it. And there's a video on my channel showing exactly how I use it mm -hmm. in case you want to see before you use. Okay. There you go. Know where to check it out. Uh, Noah's asking, any of you guys ever try the KLIR filter sock? Um, I have not. I've only used the Claire C. Mm -hmm. I, I looked at the KLIR one, but to me, the rolls just seemed too skinny. I felt like I just burned through them too quick. I yeah. want to be a lazy reefer and only change it every couple of months. So bigger the roll, the better. Yeah. So that's how I decided. <laughs> Yeah, I saw the clear on display at uh, Macna a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. It was the company that designed it partnered up with Coral View and Coral mm -hmm. View branded and packaged it. And yep. it, it is where it is today. And I believe the clear might fit in a sock holder. It does. That's its big like, advantage. You could just slide it in and yep. it would hold where your sock used to sit, which is kind of nice because mm -hmm. a lot of people have a sock holder built in already. Mm -hmm. But not all sock holders are equal. There's a e shops that makes a rectangle, and yep. then I believe uh, trigger systems just like an oval situation. Hmm. And so people have said I can't drop it in there because of that shape. You know, I need a different piece of acrylic, and I'm just like, you oh. should start making adapters. Could be a new side thing for you. You already got the acrylic oh, factory nice, going. Nice. I'm about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like you. You need a ten dollar adapter. Let me make you a full sump that doesn't have this issue. <laughs> I know it's so much better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, um, Silver City Reef. What do you recommend for bringing phosphates and nitrates up from zero? Being constantly grabbing Brightwell products, but curious if there's better options. Um, I've never dosed phosphate or nitrates. I just dump in more food because I feel there's more benefit to the reef for doing that. Yeah. Um, I've heard people using like stump removers and all kinds of weird random stuff to raise up their nitrates. Yeah. But I would just feed more coral food, feed more fish food. They're happy. Tank Buy seems to fish. grow. Buy more fish. Yep. Just increase that load physically in your tank if you guys really need nitrate i will sell you bottles of water out of my tank and you can just pour that in yep <laughs> you know uh aquarium cap solution ek filter available in the state soon okay i've only seen that that's another brand of filter i've only seen it in europe so i guess it's coming x filter yep that's a there's a new did you happen to see the new turf scrubber by jason langer i have not so i think his company is called four square aquatics and he's selling it through BRS. Oh, that's the all-enclosed one? Yeah. It's right. like a file cabinet. 
Yeah, I've seen that. I saw it in action when I visited mm -hmm. Minneapolis. I always say the wrong place. Yep. And while the water was running through it, you could grab the drawer and just pull it out. And all the water keep running inside the react the, the gizmo, you know? Ooh. And so they remove it, pull out the sheet and clean it, and then jam it back in. You didn't have to turn it off. Thirteen hundred dollars. Well, that might be the big one. I don't know. That's not cheap. It's fancy looking. It's, it's all it's, enclosed. It's, it's got some huge lights in it too. I mean, if you're going to grow algae, <laughs> I'm thinking that'll do it. Mm -hmm. But I really like the concept of the drawer. Yep. Where you can just pull it out, and you're not having to like turn off the pump, disconnect the union, lift it off the sump, carry it into your kitchen, pull out the tray. You know, that, there's a whole bunch mm -hmm. where you can pull out a tray, a drawer, and just walk over to the sink and handle it. That yep. seems pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uh, he has different sizes, and maybe the thirteen hundred was the smallest, maybe it was the largest. I thought of, that might be the largest. Mm, it's the only one I see on BRS. Um, yeah, that's all they have in stock. <laughs> maybe a little one sold. I don't know. Yep. But I'll, it was really neat. I, if I was going to try one, I'd probably want to try that one just because of the convenience factor of how it works. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, thirteen hundred is a lot of money. Okay. It's not for you. You're the one buying Alcatronics like you have money to burn. What do you mean? How did you think I have? <laughs> well, I've one. seen you here, so I know you used to have money. <laughs> it's all gone now. <laughs> it's all in the gear. <laughs> <laughs> Once upon a time. <laughs> there's there's none. It's all gone. In the backyard. It's all gone. Um, it, It's good, though, because I basically, my tank's all good, I'm out of stuff to buy. It's perfect. Um, Okay. Now, I don't ask me if my high nitrates are there because of my sand bed. How dare you blame my sand bed for my nitrate? Actually, I have no idea why they're so high. So, what, than, so if people have nitrate issues, they should add a sand bed. Well, a deep sand bed should denitrify. Yeah. So it shouldn't be adding to the problem. It should be mm -hmm. reducing. Now, Dwayne keeps coming up with this crazy idea that I should take a turkey baster and I should puff my sand bed. You know, like just... Mm -hmm. And make the stuff float up and catch it in a sock. And he says, watch your nitrates just drop like a rock. And I'm like, whatever. It's a seven foot by three foot tank. I'm not going to be turkey basting it to death. It's crazy. So, no, I don't think the sand bed causes it. I don't really know why it's up where it is. I didn't know it was up in the first place until I found out I had a test kit that was lying to me a couple of years ago. It was always telling me like five or seven. I was like, oh, perfect. That's what I want. And it turned out it was more like 80. And I was like, oh, that's not... That's not good. So I spent the last couple of years trying different products to make it drop mm -hmm. because number one, it lets me try a product and right. I can say it worked, you know, mm -hmm. so far haven't had a lot of luck in that department of finding something that works, which is really weird because I really don't feed as much as you're, you sound like you're feeding more than I am. I, it's interesting to kind of see the comparison. I don't know. I'm going to like take a photo of what I feed one day just for a day and then tell me how much you feed in comparison. I think that would be interesting to see if it's yeah. close or a big change or what and go well, for I could take a picture of like all the bits like yeah. near a roller because yeah. it's all frozen and you could yep. just say, you know, you could do a comparison, but I'm feeding the anemone cube, the 400 gallon reef, the clownfish and it's anemones in my refugium because he's a survivor of being murdered, you know, almost being murdered. And then all the fish in my frag tank. So I'm feeding probably 50 fish. Huh. But, that's, a, that's more fish than me. I have like 20 maybe. So I'm still kind of curious to see how much it relates to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it would be really nice to know a real ratio. I also, um, because of dosing Nopox now, I think I'm in my going up on my 10th week of dosing it. I've, this is my fourth bottle trying to lower the nitrate. Mm -hmm. I, uh, my phosphates, I haven't had to dose phosphate or X because my phosphates are staying low. That Nopox is working great for phosphate. Yeah. So I'm at the point now where I could go buy a huge pack of Nori and start putting in one or two sheets a day for my tangs mm -hmm. and not have to worry about it because I have Nopox handling the other side of it. So how much Nori do you put in your tank on a regular basis? Well, I have different kinds. And so I have some from Rod's Food. Yeah. And I have some from Two Little Fishies. But historically, I use the stuff you get at the Asian food market or what you might find on Amazon. Or maybe Costco or somewhere, you know, the toasted, roasted no nori. Mm -hmm. And I would, the ones from Rod's Food and from Two Little Fishies is what I consider a half a sheet. Yeah. They're about this wide and about that tall, and I fold it in half, and I put the whole thing in there. Or maybe a sheet and a half of that. But the big sheets that come from the Asian store, that's what I used to use. I'd use one full sheet. 
Yeah. And that's kind of the direction I want to go now because I'd like to fatten up my tangs even more. I saw a picture of a NASA that was like this wide. And I was like, yeah, I want mine to look like that. Mm-hmm. Ridiculously obese. <laughs> nice and plump. Um, what was I just going to say? Totally got lost. Okay. For nori, I use, I just go to the like Asian supermarket and I buy sushi nori. So it's like strips about that big Yeah. that I fold up. It's yeah. basically like a piece of paper cut in half. Um, right. And I, that's what I feed my tank every day. Yeah. One sheet of that every day. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes they're lucky they'll get a second, but that's my kind of daily one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so do 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 you guys great together doing a live stream? Why well, thank you, PR Fish Girl. Uh Mark, I just got a good ATS already. Aaron's guy makes some cool ATS. Everyone's uh, trying to talk me into a turf scrubber. Yeah. I have one. Well, it's not on the tank at the moment, but I did have one on the tank. Oh, let me get one so I can say I have one that I don't use. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's going on the frag tank. Um, I actually. Are gonna make that tank into a frag tank? The the sixty gallon one, yeah. The new one you got with a white frame that's like this yeah. wide. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be a frag tank, okay? Because you had talked about maybe being a carpet. Uh... Rock flower tank. Yeah. That that would also be awesome. One of the two. But I figure in like six months to a year, once the tank is like fully starts to really growing out, because stuff's starting to grow and, you know, I have way too many frags in there. So it's going to happen. They're just going to get all close. So, you know, when branches are about to fight, then I can frag it off and let it grow out and stuff like that. That'll be kind of fun. It'll be experiments. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But future project. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, What about wet skin over dry skin and adding ozone? I have no idea what you mean on wet skin versus dry skin. Skimming and dry skin. Oh, skimming. Correct. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so I do ozone I for about four or five hours a night. And I do a very dry skim. I'm a huge fan of a dry skim because if you're doing a wet skim, I mean, some people could arguably use it as a water change if they, yeah. Yeah. you know, you're doing it too much. But I don't want him to my skimmer every day. You know, so I let it be super dry so it can go for a couple of weeks. Like, I guess if you look at the cover of this video, you know, let me pull up for two seconds. So that's super dark. So mine is like dark, dark, black, dark. And that's after about a week and a half worth in the skimmer. I have to look at this. I'm waiting for YouTube to catch up. I want to see it. All right. Um, Please sell frags. I will definitely sell or trade or whatever frags in the future. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I I don't even care for selling stuff half the time. I'm just like, oh, whatever. Just trade me something. Give me something I don't have. But Is it hard for you to ship corals from Canada to the U.S.? Does that affect you in any way with customs? Yes, it would. Um, If I... That would be a pain. So if... um. Because somebody in Tampa is asking you for corals and you're in Canada. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I am. You might be able to do it with Zoas and Softies. Mm. Acros, you definitely you have to deal with You don't actually do it within the box. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but you still, you'd want to overnight it, right, for corals, regardless. But Zoas, you can bring across, right? Any yeah. Softies, rock flowers, that type of stuff. Although you guys get rock flowers cheaper there, so it's probably pointless. I get mine from the States. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> yep. So, um, yeah. Okay. So I'm a huge fan of doing a dry skim because I don't want it to pull out all that water and salt and all like the good stuff. I want it to be just the nasty. I want it to work hard. Whatever it pulls out is really nasty stuff. So, um, so wet skims like with very liquidy, a light tea, green tea color, dry skims are getting dark and nasty. So with that, um, ozone, I get asked about that one quite a bit. Uh, drive to the border. Yes. I've done that many times. Um, how do you adjust your skimmer? How do I adjust it? Now, how often do you adjust it? Never. The first exactly. t- time I set it up, then I haven't touched exactly. it since. You just turn it on and leave it alone. Yep. Rarely do you have to, like, turn a knob, right, to change something slightly? Never. Yeah. The only time I've had my skimmer freak. Huh? I think people need to know that. I think they're always tinkering. Yeah. Messing with it. Set it and forget it. The only time. The spot, yeah. Oh, something cool I did get. Um, Auto Aqua, Auto XP. Mm-hmm they make a little smart skimmer security thing. So I yeah. put that on my skimmer. So if it ever goes to overflow, it turns it off, right. which is cool. It's happened once. Yeah. Um, I want to get one of those myself for my frag tank. Yeah. Cause I have a small skimmer. Mm-hmm. They're only like 60 bucks. Like they're not bad. I think that it's a good peace right. of mind. I like their products. Cause they're like a good price point where it's not like, yeah, I don't know about that. It's like, yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> it's important. It's a big thing. No, I agree with you. I like yeah. your, oh, 60 bucks. I can buy that. That's exactly. If it's 150, I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that, right? It, well, it's... I think for 150, you can get like three devices from them. Yeah, that's what like, I mean. It's good. A leak detector and a skimmer protector and something else. Yeah. Top protector or something. Yeah, I think one's for a heater. 
One's for overflow. I got the other one for the on my auto top off bin. I have a float switch anyways, but I have that as well. So I'll cut the flow if it ever overflows for some reason. So it's just yep. preventative, right? Prevent. Keep keep ha- <laughs> keep this spouse the happy. Time, it's about half gone. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, hey, I wanted to mention. Someone mentioned in your questions uh, about skimmer cleaners, or what I call the skimmer swabby, because that was the brand that came yep. out from Avast Marine. Yes. I've been using the Avast Marine skimmer swabby now for ten years. Mm-hmm. I guess I don't know. It came out. I had that on my old Euro Reef on my 280 gallon. And the 280 gallon leaked in July of 2010. So this is 2019. So I had it before then, obviously, probably a year, maybe two. So I'm probably 11 years in with the skimmer swabby. Mm-hmm. In all those years, I've had to replace the actual motor that turns the squeegee mm-hmm. uh, three or four times. Mm. Which, you know, I mean, it kind of sucks because your skimmer's down for a little bit while you're trying to get that part repaired. Mm -hmm. And mine is such a large one. And because I have absolutely zero desire. This is the kind of thing you're great at, Devin. You're like, let me get out the soldering iron and I'm going to get out the heat gun. And I'm like, I'm going to pack in a box of peanuts and ship it to a vast marine and say, fix it. Mm -hmm. And then it makes me working perfectly. And I'm very happy again. Yep. So it's just, it's nicer. But they put in like an industrial motor in mine. Mm -hmm. They Mark, we had to use a really large motor for yours because the one you had burned up. It just didn't hold yep. hold up well. And he said, and because it's bigger, it has to run slower. So instead of running it for one minute, you got to run it for two minutes. Well, I don't care how long it runs, as long as it runs a few times a day to keep the neck nice and clean. Mm-hmm. And I love the thing. I mean, yep. I clean the collection cup probably every two weeks. So and I have a waste collector to catch the juice. So, so okay, on my coral box skimmer, I had the a vast one on it, the swabby. Now I haven't bothered putting anything on the newer skimmer now that I've been using for the last four or five months now, and I haven't really. I don't know if there's been a big difference or not. I mean, I, I, I mean, I clean it probably every week or two. So maybe yeah, I you, st- clean it, you clean, you dump out the cup, you clean the cup, yeah. you clean the neck, right? Yes. Yeah. The riser, because that's the important part. A lot of mm-hmm. people I think, overlook it or don't want to touch it or have you know they don't want to get their hands dirty. <laughs> Yep, but that part is so important because when that gets crudded up, I feel like your efficiency on the skimmer. Let's just say, hey Devin, I'm gonna sell you this amazing skimmer. It's gonna do such a great job in your tank, but if you don't clean the riser, it's gonna work about eighty percent of its normal job. Would you like, oh, that's good enough, or would you think I should keep the riser clean? You know, depends on the leak. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So on my when I had that before I had the swabby, yep, I got myself a really nice all plastic toilet brush, like mm-hmm. frequently. And it was made for my uh, reef system. It was, you know, rinsed out really well first. And then I would just go inside the neck and put the lid back on top. And that was it. That was my thing every night. Mm -hmm. Because before that, I took the cup off every single night and cleaned it and the riser. And I did that probably for a year. So 365 times. You cleaned it daily? Yeah. Wow. The neck to be clean. I'm impressed. Then I saw the brush thing. I thought, you know, this is so much easier. It's like a chimney sweep. Just plunge it. You know, just clean whatever came off in the water, just burble over into the cup. And then the Swabby was affordable, and I was like, you know what? I'm going that route. And I probably paid like 180 bucks for my Swabby. Mm-hmm. Never regretted that money. Worth every penny. I mean, not even a hint of a doubt. And even though it broke a couple of times, I still don't hold that against them. It's something that won't last forever. I just said, fix it. Give me whatever I need, and they just take care of it. Yep. Nice. So I really do recommend them. I think they're awesome for a hobbyist. They're, I mean, you know, you and I, we run reef tanks that are seen by everyone on YouTube. And Mm -hmm. so there are lots of ways to run a reef tank as the comments alone show, right? Yep. But if you just want to enjoy your tank and not have to constantly be working on it, Mm -hmm. you're going to put these kind of devices on your tank to make your life simpler. Now, do you need a Trident? Do you need a Clarity? Do you need an ATS? No, you can get by without any of those things, but things make the life easier, keep Mm -hmm. you well informed, keep you, you know, it just takes care of it so you don't have to work so hard at it. And that's the part I like. Yeah. Well, for me, <laughs> Greg is a toilet brush back in the day. Uh, um, so I guess it depends on your levels. If I, if my skimmer is only doing 80% because I haven't cleaned it in a week yeah. and my levels are good, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Right? If it's not an issue, then it's not a big thing i mean i loved having the automated skimmer i'm sure it made my other skimmer work well but i also feel like the nano skimmer works better than my coral box one did too mm-hmm. so i mean it may even just make up like i feel like it's smaller and pulls out just as much if not more 
So uh, uh, Clearwater Scarbers are saying you need to get one to they get so those determined. nitrates down. Okay, so I can tell you, here's the thing that confused me about the nitrates. Yep. The nitrates are up on my tank. When I use a NIOS test kit, it's off the charts. And the chart only goes from 0 to 25. So I'm above 25. I cannot get anything under 25 with my reef. Mm -hmm. I take brand new salt water and measure, zero. I took water that I brought home from Bon Air, one. I was like, okay, the test kit works. <laughs> I can prove it. <laughs> but my reef, it's like, whoosh, it's fuchsia. It's horrible. So I bought the API test kit. And it seems to be measuring around 20, if I'm reading the kit correctly. Mm -hmm. But technically, if that's really the number, if it's really 20, then my, NIO, my NIOS kit should be working. So I'm wondering if maybe my nitrates are higher than I believe. Maybe they're 40 and not 20, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. But the point is, I would like to see if Nopox can do the job. And so yep. I've given it nine weeks. I don't know if it's going to take three months to do it, but I've mm -hmm. been dealing with a lot of this weird white film on the glass and this weird, like, gooey stuff happening in the sump and inside the Vortec pumps Those, and inside the airflow box. That's all kinds of bacteria blooms going on. It is. Mm -hmm. And then recently I put in live rock enhance in my tank twice. And oh my God, the snot that I pulled out of my sump and my overflow box mm -hmm. was epic. I mean, I took a picture of it. I, I'll send it to you later. It was okay. so gross. But I had to because it was just out of control, this weird stuff. And everyone's like, you're using too much no pox. Well, the instructions of the bottle say to use for my water volume, 64 milliliters a day. It's a good chunk. And I'm using 40. I'm using two thirds of what they recommend. Mm -hmm. Or one third less than they recommend. Would you start at? Did you slowly build yourself up? Yeah. Just from the beginning till now. And okay. I've cleaned out my system twice now of that weird sludge. You know, the first time I got out of hand and I broke down the entire protein skimmer down to the last screw, cleaned mm -hmm. every bit of it and rebuilt it. Yep. And uh, then, like I said, I use the Live Rock Enhance and I think Live Rock Enhance mixed with Nopox is a no no because mm -hmm. those two really work hand in hand bacteria wise and i think that's what created this insane this insanity i had to clean out <laughs> but uh anyway i'll tell you guys this uh if you don't use nopox if you don't use ben reef if you don't use live rock and hands and you want your tank to look hd High just, clean <laughs> just clean your glass really i mean it's if i don't touch my glass my reef's like okay and then i clean the glass and it's like the next day i'm like oh my god my reef is in high def it's okay. gorgeous ozone it was the biggest hd thing for me after running oh, yeah. ozone for four or five hours your water is crystal clear so when you use ozone yes. you're measuring the orp i guess to make sure you don't use too much ozone right i will be soon oh i thought you had uh, you had the orp probe on your apex. i do i do it's not on the apex though um so i used to have the orp probe What's it on then <laughs> it's the probe is just in the sump so i'm plugged in um i actually ordered a new pm1 module okay. yesterday because okay. i haven't had it but I have a bigger water volume and I left the ozone set with the old tank was. So it's going to be running less anyway. So I know it won't be an issue, but um, I am doing that. So it if was. You had an uh, for your audience, they need to know this, that if you do run ozone, you need to be able to measure the ozone. And yes. you also, there's actually a risk factor for the human beings. Mm -hmm. You ever heard of ozone alert days? Don't go outside. It's unsafe. Well, you're pumping ozone into your house, into your home, the air mm -hmm. you're breathing. So it's very important that you're filtering the air coming out of your protein skimmer, for example. Yep. And your skimmer needs to be made of cast acrylic. So, if it's made of extruded acrylic, the ozone will break it down. It'll just start crazing. Yep. No. So, so those we, are important things they need to know. If you buy a skimmer, it should say, usually they'll say if it's rated for ozone or not. If not, you can yep. email the company and ask them. Yeah. Uh, the NIOS one that I'm currently using, it even has a little ozone port on the bottom. So that made it easy. Now, just throwing this out there is another kind of precaution. If you guys do use ozone, like less is more. Find just enough to accomplish what you want. Because yeah. at least me, I don't use the sterilizer or anything. I basically use it as a carbon. Clarify my water, break down those organics. Um, and again, you don't want to breathe it. So ideally, it's a good idea to have a little bag of carbon on the vents of your skimmer. Right. And the other thing, at least what I do, is I let mine run from about 1 in the morning to 4 or 5 in the morning. So it's when I'm in bed in a different room anyways. Um, so ozone does have a very quick half-life. It only lives for seconds, like, you know, it breaks down. But mm -hmm. it will still, it will smell like static in the air if you have too much of it kind of getting into it. So if you smell that lightning staticky kind of smell, then you should probably, you know, put more of a filter on your skimmer or whatever you're using for reactor. Burn or, the house down, run away. No, 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 don't do that. Bad advice. Um, or, you know, like, you know, ha run it when you're not home. Run it in a different room. If you got pets, you know, in the middle of the night when no one's around the tank. The, all those are all little things that kind of add up. So, yeah. 
stuff to keep in mind. But it does a freaking amazing job at clearing your yeah. water. And it takes yeah, out all the it, yellows out. It makes your water like crystal, crystal clear. I believe one of the reasons, I mean, it makes this, the skimmer obviously gets more efficient. That's why you put it into the skimmer. Yeah. But I believe if I remember correctly, ozone is like adding another oxygen molecule. Yes. Okay. So great, right? there's two different ways of making ozone. There is using UV light or using what's called Corona discharge. And the Corona discharge is what I use because it takes like two or three watts versus like a 50, 60 watt thing. So it's more power efficient. Mm -hmm. And it uses two little plates and it makes a static field between it. So electricity is basically jumping back and forth. As air flows by it, it breaks up the oxygen molecule. So normally it's O2. It breaks them up. So they're scattered. And then it's very, it it's, likes its friends, right? So it's, it'll reattach again. And then you'll get O3, which is ozone. Now, it doesn't really, it wants to, it doesn't want to hold it for long. It'll break off and attach on whatever and it'll oxidize and break it down. Right. Uh, that's my non scientific so if it breaks down so quickly, it's not really adding more oxygen to the tank. No. Um, it just doesn't get the yellow out of the water. Yeah. So it, it, what it does is when you're using it within your skimmer, it's going to attach to those organic molecules. It's going to oxidize yeah. them, which breaks it down and helps the skimmer take it out more easily. Yeah. Sounds like you're just putting peroxide in your skimmer. Basically the same thing, to be honest. You could absolutely, if you take your little air intake and drip peroxide into there, it's going to be very similar to what ozone will do. It's going to octazize stuff. It's going to make your... Actually, that would make your water clearer. It'll break stuff down. So could do that. Yeah. You should try it with a dosing pump. See how it works. <laughs> yeah, you thought about it. <laughs> you're like, ah. You're, you're, you're like, no. I, and then it, what are you talking about? <laughs> I totally saw that. My advice of burning the house down was bad advice. Yeah. So, um, okay. Second disclaimer. If you're using procs on your tank, uh, one mil per 10 gallons. Don't exceed that. Is a general rule. Um, if you do too much, it could actually be harmful to the fish's gills. So it's fine in small amounts, but don't use a ton of it. So, all right. Mama wants to know if I'm wasted yet. That's hilarious. Yep. Uh, so Nick was saying o ozone dissipates extremely rapidly. Yes, yes, it does. That's why I don't overly worry, but wait, do it in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, do, 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 do. All right. So skimmer versus skimmer list. Do you need a skimmer? No. Nice to have. Yes. Um, Adding more oxygen to your water is one of the biggest benefits. Um, you know, secondary, it's going to take out a lot of the nasty stuff in your tank. But flip side, it doesn't discriminate. So, I mean, if you're adding all this stuff in, you may be taking half of it out. Uh, so earlier, someone else was asking, too, about when their nutrients are too low, they can't get it up. One thing you can do is remove less. So, you know, you could feed more or maybe you skim less. Maybe you turn your the lights on your refugium or your turf scrubber down instead of they're running 24 seven drop it to 20 16 12 you know you can play with those schedules so that you're removing less from the water so that is one way to add it up i've i've always been hesitant on the whole dosing nitrate and phosphate thing directly i think mm -hmm. it's better just add food or take out less it just seems more happy approach that's my my quick explanation yeah, the phosphate's staying low and i mean it happens to people mm -hmm. do less water changes you know, just yep. give some time to actually build up something. You, it's okay to have a little bit of that stuff in your tank. A little nitrate, a little phosphate is fine. Yeah. You don't want zero. You, you want a little bit, though. It's good to have that because corals absorb it. They, I don't know if they eat it. They absorb it, but. Yeah. It is good for growth. Do you run ozone with a UV sterilizer? Um, I've never used a UV sterilizer. Um, I have used ozone. You could run them both. They're kind. Okay. So ozone is going to break down oxidized stuff. UV sterilizer kind of similar but in the water it's going to kill whatever flows through it providing you have the right contact time lots of people run too much flow through it and then you're not really getting the benefit you want slow flow to whatever it's rated for and it's going to kill those particles that flow through it um, you know you mentioned that and that reminded me someone asked a question earlier about the flow rate going through your sump giving enough time you know like measuring the right amount of water going through the sump for the skimmer to take out things mm -hmm. out of the water yeah. So if the water's just shooting through like, you know, warp drive, can the skimmer actually do its job? The skimmer's mm -hmm. always going to try to do its job, but there's no reason to have a lot of water running through your sump. And I think for the most part, we've gotten much better about that. Yeah. 15 years ago, you'd find guys saying, hey, I found this pool pump. It's amazing. It moves 86,000 gallons an hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I don't need any kind of pumps in my tank now. My return is all the return. You know, it, was, it was crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And have like 14 baffles in their sump because of micro bubbles because yeah. there's so much water <laughs> nice now, i think we're much better about low voltage pumps dc pumps you know mm -hmm. 
whether it's something from Coral View or it's something from you know the Vectra or uh, maybe the core pump might be DC. I don't remember. Yeah. And these different pumps on the market, they run lower power. They move the water enough to get it up to the tank, but they don't slingshot it through your sump really quickly. So your skimmer, your GFO, your carbon can all process the water and clean it before it heads back up. Yeah. Um, exactly. Okay. Someone's just asking about the levels for phosphate. In my mind, 0.03 to 0.09 is a happy range. Basically, you just don't want it to be zero. Yeah. Um, if you're like one, two, three, I mean, that would be on the high side for me. But anything less than 0.09, I see is a, a happy range. Yeah. Like my tank's 0.1 and I don't even care. Yep. Um, like my current tank with nitrates, like less than two is like nothing in it. My last tank was 15 to 30 range. And it was that, yeah. that for like two years everything was happy it's growing colors were good so don't worry about it yeah. but um derek's asking what nitrate test do you find best i cannot for the life of me see the colors on my red sea pro kit i use the red sea ones actually um if you want nios you can get a beautiful color of fuchsia perfect it's supposed to be clear <laughs> it comes out fuchsia no. if you want to use api you want to be yellow but if it's orange it's bad and if it's red it's really really bad mm -hmm. api is dirt cheap it's not it's not uh, as precise Mm -hmm. it, you know, it's nitrate it's not like a, it's not an important accuracy test we want the water in the vial to be as yellow as possible in that cheap kit that costs 10 bucks mm -hmm. and if it's anything other than yellow you know you have a problem yep so i'm i'd love to have a yellow result for once in my life <laughs> one day well maybe you Red need... what's up maybe you need to try that turf scrubber <laughs> and get it down you know <laughs> um i could probably hook one up try it for fun see what happens instead of the no pox you know but i i'm going to give no pox a little bit more time all right if it, it if it doesn't off, win in two more months then try it well i'm thinking a month okay one month i just feel like give it like a total of 12 weeks or whatever yep and i'm at right around 10 i think right now like on friday i think it's 10 weeks and if i get to the point where i can reduce to the maintenance dose then i know no pox did its job Mm -hmm. You know, I used a certain amount, but now my num my nitrates are where they should be. Now I use a maintenance dose and keep them there. If I could do that, then there's really no reason for me to do the turf scrubber. Yep. But, you know, I know they exist. I've been, I mean, they've been around forever. This is not a new thing. They I came out a long time ago in Australia, and everyone had them over there. And I thought, what are these people doing over there? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. We don't use those here. Well, actually, okay. what are you using for your refugium light? You have some really old something. I can't remember what it was, but... I have a unique LED uh, 6,500 Kelvin light. Mm -hmm. And I've had it now for nine years. Is, and it's, uh, it's LED or bulb T5? It's LEDs. Yep. And it's all 6,500 Kelvin. So it's mm -hmm. white. And I think it has four and a half pounds of aluminum heat sink in it. Because it's a four foot long fixture. But I'm thinking about replacing it with aluminum lights from Reef Bright for yep. the new song. Because he's got one where... It's 6,500 and I think 5,100, mm -hmm. like every other LED. You yep. kind of, when you look at the reflection of the water, you can see yellow, white, yellow, white, yellow, white, yellow, white, yellow, white, when you're looking at the strip of lights. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one worked really well in my frag tank. So I'm thinking I might want to put that one over my new sump. Nice. Um, one of the biggest thing is too, is just having a more intense light to in promote more growth to export more. Um, is your nitrate pro purple color or am I blind? It's kind of like a, pinky purple color i guess well i'll post a picture of it i'll send you one next time i do a test i'm due for i haven't tested my tank done the full range in like a month so gonna happen soon um what's a good phosphate to nitrate ratio phosphate you know anything from 0.1 to 0.9 nitrate i'm gonna say you know less than 20 is probably fine uh earlier someone's asking about the ratio well so the ratio what people are mainly talk about is called the redfield ratio and i think it's like one to nine i believe it is it might be slightly off but basically what it is if you don't have phosphates the, the just the part that you need to care about if you don't have phosphates you can't get rid of nitrates you need to have phosphates in order to get rid of nitrates so right. when one ppm of phosphates is equal to, you know, nine parts nitrate type of deal. So that that's the part of when people talk about the ratio. That's basically what you need to know about it. So I've seen people, you know, running GFO or something that strips all their phosphate out. And they're like, oh, why is my nitrates not lowering? And that's why. And when I overdosed my vodka dosing last year, uh, I was doing intention. I was dosing really fast because I was being impatient. Mm -hmm. I was sick of waiting. And uh, my 
nitrates wouldn't budge, but my phosphates started collapsing. And I was getting that weird uh, pink goo inside my song. Mm-hmm. And I was told, don't worry about it. But I was watching my phosphates go, shoom, shoom, shoom. I was like, wow, it skipped the nitrate and went straight for the phosphate. That's insane. And I stopped dosing the vodka immediately because I got really nervous. I started watching some corals turn white. Mm-hmm. And when I turned, when I stopped dosing vodka, the next day, all the pink stuff in my sump vanished. It just literally ate itself up. Oh, nice. It great. I didn't have to clean it up. It just consumed itself. Rob, rob, rob. <laughs> nice. Hey, yeah. it works. So, I don't know. The, the one interesting thing that I love about this hobby is there's so many different ways to accomplish the same thing, right? You know, like look at Jamie's tank. Gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous reef tank. Packed full of all the high-end corals. Doesn't use a skimmer. I mean, my now tank, I don't use a skimmer. Complete off scale. My big tank, I do. I think there's lots of benefits. So there is, okay, 16 to 1 is the red field ratio. Thank you for posting that. Uh, and a reef tank, 10.5 to 1. There you go. Appreciate that. Uh, the 9 is for carbon. Ah, there you go. So 1 phosphate to 16 nitrate to 9 carbon. Um, thanks for the clarification. Do, 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 do. Math. <laughs> yep. 2.5. Okay, that's way too high, Derek. Done, done, done. For which one? Uh, the last comment. Derek says his phosphates are measuring 2.5 ppm. Yeah, that's a little on the high side. 0.25, that's no big deal. But 2.5, that's a lot. That's a good chunk. <laughs> I'll just do a big water change. 3.0, it's in your rock and sand. So you're that close. Is that true? Yeah, just told you that 45 minutes I ago. I know, but I've been debating it. How quickly do you forget? Go read Randy Holmes Arley, Farley's article. About phosphate. Okay. I mean, he wrote the stuff in 2003 and 2004 to help us. I know he's a good guy. I like his articles. No, he's 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 brilliant. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's the one that I trust most when it comes to chemistry. Yep. No, nope, that's fair. And he can be found on reef to reef, so it's not like he's impossible to get to. Mm-hmm. No, it's very true. Um. All right. Okay. Any last questions? I do got to go soon because it's anniversary night and I'm going for dinner with the wife in a bit. So I cannot be on here all night. <laughs> so if there's any other questions ask away uh derek's been running a scar for three months too what can i do so what do do, 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 do. do you have any questions scrolling okay so phosphate 2.5 2.5 is high um i can't remember what size you said your tank was but honestly i'd just do a big water change um if you have sand in your tank you know it could be full of stuff you know if you don't vacuum it vacuum that once in a while um i also never like to vacuum the whole sand bed at once because you are mixing up stuff like, you know, every water change, maybe to do like 20% of it and just slowly go around it. Um, someone else saying check your RODI filter. So that could be check your source water. Because if your water you're adding to your tank for water changes to top off has phosphates, that could be part of the issue in the first place. So maybe... I'll, do, phosphate RX. I'll just use that and knock it out. Or you could just try phosphate RX or GFO. No, phosphate RX. <laughs> just, just that one? Yes, the GFO is not going to do anything. Phosphate RX will knock it down. There you go. Try it. GFO works. I use GFO all the time. It almost works too well. If you're using GFO or Phosphate RX, be careful. You do not drop it too fast. When I first started reefing like years and years ago, um, I used too much of it and I stripped it out of water and I lost a bunch of acros or they paled out, whatever happened at the time, because I was stripping too much out of the water. So you could suck it out of the corals, essentially, like you're starving them. So that's one thing to be cautious with. Um, X-Jet, NIOS 160 on a 75 gallon with 30 some, so 100 gallons of water. Yep, 160 definitely work well with that. I have the 160 on my 160 gallon tank, so you would definitely be good on 100 gallons. Derek, your tank is 300 gallons. It's a fish only with live rock. Um, would be 30 times. You need 180 drops of Phosphate RX. A bottle of Phosphate RX has a thousand drops. Mm, is that right? Thousand drops? No, 600 drops in the bottle. So you can get three treatments out of one bottle for your tank. And you could knock those phosphates down and down and down. You could do it like once every four days mm, and, yep. knock it down and measure the next day and you'll see the results. Yep. And if you want to use uh, the 10 micron sock, they come in seven inch and they come in four inch. I have both on my website as well. Um, and you definitely want 10 microns, not mm-hmm. something else. Very important. Not a mesh bag, not 100 microns, not 200. A lot of people mix them up thinking it doesn't matter. It very much matters if you're trying to catch it out. Because with a fish-only system, that's a lot of fish with gills, and mm-hmm. we want to sure that they're safe when you're dosing this product. Yep. Okay. So go slow. Listen to Mark. Use 10 micron socks. If you're using GFO, go slow. Don't overdo it. Um, yeah, use the right amount. 
<laughs> okay, so someone else was just saying sufficiently tank. I mean, in that case, do a big water change, feed less. That's a good way. Put less into your tank. Uh, I have green cyano in the fuge, none in the display. My chato grows really slow. Um, I've In the past, I've had cyano just in my refugium too. Uh, you could just treat your sump with something like hemiclean if you wanted. That would work just to get it out of there. Um, doo -doo -doo. Phosphate will be locked in a while, so I took a large dosing of RX. Yep, quite possible. All right. Okay. All right, guys. I must run because, yeah, it's that time. That time, that anniversary you day. You dragged me on this show, and then you ended abruptly. Okay, I see how this is. <laughs> Mark, what else? Tell us more. If you no, need, if you need your your Saturday, are you live streaming this Saturday? I could come up with ten more things to talk about. No, yeah, actually, I am. I'm doing another live stream this Saturday at two o'clock. What, what's the topic? And uh, you know, I don't know. No, I uh, I try to think of something interesting before I get here, <laughs> and uh, I've got a couple of thoughts in my mind. Uh, who knows? I might be talking about the new sump because that's, you know, the channel likes to know what I'm doing with my tank. And that sump should be built by then. Maybe I could showcase it. Explain what's all going to happen. Perfect. I don't know. Yep. Um, and the other thing, I could be talking about what happened in a fish store recently where someone attacked it and damaged uh, a beautiful tank that apparently was worth close to $100,000. Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. So there's some, uh, you know, it, it, we always should be watching. our When we're in a fish store, we should be looking around to make sure everything's safe. Mm -hmm. Make sure everyone's up to no good. Report yep. them if you see it because livestock's on the line. Yeah, no kidding. That's crazy. Yeah. Forget the money. It's just the, the animals. You know, they deserve better. Exactly. They didn't do anything wrong. They're just in a box of water and suddenly someone decides to do something nefarious. Yep. Nope. 100%. I hope you have a great evening. Thank you, sir. Thanks for Thank coming on today. How many were on this channel? How many were watching today? Uh, total viewing hours 155. Peak concurrent 151. Nice. Yeah, it's good. Thanks, good. For, thanks for coming on. I'll have to get you on once in a while, once a month or something. It was nice to be on here. Yeah, I like it. I like when I have to do all the hard work. I know. It's more fun having the conversation, too, than me just yeah. talking to the camera. Yeah. That's good. All right. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out today. Thank you for the little super chat. That was awesome. Much appreciated. Um, going out for anniversary. And yeah, it's going to be good. So thanks, guys. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button. Tap it nicely. Whatever floats your boat. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Oh, and if you're at Reef Palooza, New York this weekend. Come say hi. All right, guys. Happy Wednesday.